Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 legendary splash damage weapons in Borderlands 3. These are the guns that shoot things that go boom, bang, say hi to your nan. These legendaries don't mess around. With splash damage rolls available on class mods and artifacts, guns with this damage type are always going to be better than without. And that's why these are some of the most powerful weapons in the entire game. I'll be letting you know where you can find each one, explain what it does and how you can achieve their full power. If you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like or hey maybe you could even subscribe or follow me on Twitter and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 legendary splash damage weapons in Borderlands 3 with the Boomsickle, a rare blood off assault rifle that comes in every element and has an increased chance to drop from anointed X4 who you fight around here in the Anvil as part of the Malevolent Practice Quest. The Boomsickle is the prime example of everything being better with splash damage. A regular sickle isn't very good, but the Boomsickle is great. It's a shotgun that takes ammo from the AR pool, consuming 2 ammo per shot and firing at a fully automatic pace. This is one gun you'll never go empty with and deal some heavy damage at the same time. It fires 10 explosive pellets in a unique shape that detonate with force. You can use it to carve a path through enemy territory directly to Mother Russia. With this in your hands there's not much that will stand in your way and it's a gun that you can fire all day. Moving on now to the Embers Purge, a unique Maliwan SMG that can only be obtained by completing Embers crew challenges throughout the Handsome Jackpot DLC. The Embers Purge aims to bathe the world in flames, ridding it of bronies. Just kidding, Twilight Sparkle is my favourite. The splash damage here isn't in the projectiles themselves, but what is summoned after. Land enough shots on your target and a pool of flaming fury will grow beneath their feet, causing insane damage over time. While your enemies are swimming in that pool, they'll burn to a crisp within seconds. The idea with it is to shoot until that puddle spawns, then switch targets and watch as they slowly melt away. It will ignite the field in an instant, tearing through mobs and can also trouble bosses whenever their feet are touching the floor. Moving on now to the Kalsen, a dial SMG that can come in any element including none and will drop the quickest from Captain Tron at the end of Athenus if you're on Mayhem 6 or higher. The Kalsen is the number one explosive dial SMG, firing rounds that stick to your target and then explode a short while later. As you slot in your next mag you'll hear the crescendo of sticky bombs detonating ensuring that there is no time when you're not dealing damage. Both the initial and secondary damage sources get boosted by splash damage skills, making it especially effective on Moe's, but anyone can tear it up with this gun. It comes in both standard and times 2 variants, with the latter holding the higher damage potential, but I personally like to stick with the times 1. It's a gun that is as solid as they come, doing work across the board. Now for the Complex Rude, a melee one sniper rifle that belongs to the Bounty of Blood with an increased chance to drop from Lanny Dixon, you fight around here in Ashfall Peaks. The Complex Rude is comfortably the number one splash damage sniper rifle in the game and many players number one sniper overall. The reason for that is due to it being unlike anything else. It fires in a two round burst with each shot designed to cause maximum damage. When they land, bright lights will flicker from the impact point, triggering countless explosions that rip enemies apart. The reason for its power is that projectile pattern, which can be abused by every vault hunter. Moes can wield a minesweeper to dot the floor with micro grenades, causing explosions everywhere, downing everyone including you. Mara can have each shot coming quicker than the last, producing deadly ricochets at the same time. Black will upscale their critical count, and Zane has it easy with the racer literally erasing bosses for him. 
This is simply a weapon everyone should have and proves that sometimes the things we least understand do the most damage. Time now for the Flipper, a melee worn SMG that belongs to the Bounty of Blood and will drop quite often from Minosaur that you find around here in Blood Sun Canyon. The Flipper isn't just the name of Spongebob's power move in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, it's also a deadly elemental submachine gun. It was the gun least likely to deal splash damage in high school, but would you look at that, it does and is what makes it the weapon it is today. It takes the melee one charge mechanic to the next level as you don't just have to wait for it to start firing, but for it to reach its full power. That's achieved about 15 or so rounds into each magazine and will see it blasting 9 hot projectiles into the face of your enemies. All those pellets help to raise its damage and to proc abilities, helping Flak reset fadeaway, Zane to activate seeing dead, give Amara a massive critical boost, Moe's to initiate redistribution and more. Speaking of Moe's, she can go all day firing it at full throttle without the thought of reloading, turning the game into easy mode, and Zayn can do it too with a Digiclone regen ammo anointment. Whoever you play on, the flipper is a wonderful gun that you just can't help but to love. Next up is the Backburner, a Mayhem 6 Plus launcher that drops the fastest from the Agonizer 9000 at the end of the Guts of Carnivora. The Backburner isn't just my nickname for the sun after that one time I fell asleep on my stomach at the beach, kidding I never go outside. The Backburner is purely a Borderlands 3 weapon of mass destruction, firing powerful orbs at a high automatic speed which steal the majority of their damage post impact. That's because once the projectile lands, a singularity is formed, sucking enemies in and pounding the ground with mini merv grenades. For their size, they deal phenomenal damage and can drop bosses easily. It consumes just the 3 ammo per shot, which is relatively low for a launcher and allows you to go through mobbing arenas or meaty boss fights without running dry. Its main draw is bossing though, the place where it gets slightly challenged and if you ever wanted to end a fight quickly, just pull it out and stand back. Next up is the Unkempt Harold, a tall pistol that can come in all the elements with an increased chance to drop from Cabadord. You fight in this area of Blood Sun Canyon, it's part of the Bounty of Blood. The Unkempt Harold is a pistol with some grunt, sending out a wave of explosive projectiles that cause some serious damage to whoever they hit. However, that projectile pattern is something you need to be mindful of, working best in the close side of medium ranges once all its projectiles are exposed. And if you're a Mara, you'll want to avoid heavy rain. The Times 3 version is the best, as they both fire 7 projectiles either way. Those 7 projectiles combined with its wide pallet spread allow it to deal with multiple mobs at once, and you can switch between single and multiple enemy destructions simply by changing the distance between you and your target. It's a great gun, especially now since it's unnecessary buff, and it will never disappoint. Coming up next is the Kick Charger, an alien barreled Vladov rocket launcher that is exclusive to Arms Race, that can drop anywhere there, but does have a high chance to spawn in this chest. The Kick Charger is Borderlands 3's Northfleet, your get out of jail free card. Whenever you think a boss has too much health, then you should ask them to try this on for size, because it's not gonna fit. Its base damage is already crazy high, but holding down that trigger will have it grow to be up to 3 times stronger, and can be shortcutted simply through sliding. That slide mechanic couples perfectly with Zane and violent speed slash momentum, allowing him to reach insane damage numbers. The power is here for everyone to enjoy though, and what's great is it only consumes a single rocket per shot. That is absolutely nothing, enabling you to use it for extended periods wherever you see fit. Of course, it's great for bossing, but it's fantastic for mobbing too, and not just because of its low ammo consumption. This is no ordinary launcher, it's a railgun, penetrating enemies with energy bolts and causing huge amounts of collateral damage. It's simply the next level launcher, no two ways about it.
Up next, the plasma coil, a top tier SMG which always comes in shock and radiation and can only be dropped in arms raids with an increased chance to drop from this chest. The plasma coil is a weapon that has harnessed another state of matter, firing a blistering volley of 16 elemental orbs that cut through anything and everyone. Charging it up will have them unleash at a rapid pace, crushing whatever they impact. Often half the burst will be wasted on a single target, so I like to pretend like I'm watering my magnolias, careful not to drown them, we're going for even distribution. It comfortably deals with mobs, crushing multiple opponents in each quickfire burst, and that strength remains while bossing, cementing it as one of the best weapons in the game. Before number 1 is revealed, let's dive into some honourable mentions. First up is the Trevenator, an SMG, I mean shotgun, that has an increased chance to draw from private beans. Around here in Athenas is part of the quest Invasion of Privacy. The Trevenator isn't your ordinary melee one weapon in that it has no charge time, firing 3-6 pellets in a 3 shot burst whenever you tap the trigger. Each of those pallets hit hard and its unique effect helps to raise its DPS, so you spend less time waiting and more time shooting. The next honourable mention I have for you is the Lucky 7, a special Jacob's Pistol that drops the quickest from Scrap Trap's nest around here in the compactor as part of the Handsome Jackpot DLC. The Lucky 7 is one of the most damaging weapons in the game when fully stacked up. Each time you reload you'll be granted up to 5 bonuses, one of them being explosive rounds and the other raising its pallet count from 1 to 7. Those two combined create a formidable weapon in Moses hands that'll have you destroying everything while keeping its bonuses intact. Other Vault Hunters can do that too through Terra Anoints, but it's definitely easy money on Moses. Another honourable mention I have for you is the Kybes Worth, the Maliwan SMG that drops from Wotan at the end of the Maliwan takedown. The Kybes Worth fires 2 or 3 projectiles per shot for the cost of 1 or 2 ammo. Its projectiles follow an unusual pattern arcing from its barrel right into your enemies. Its pallet count, damage and fire rate are all great, helping it serve up some heat, resulting in a well rounded splash damage weapon. Next up, the Plague Bearer, a Mayhem 6 plus launcher that drops most often from the Warden, round here in the Anvil. If the Backburner is for bossing, then the Plague Bearer is for mobbing, firing the same glistening sphere, but this one's not alone. It's circled by smaller projectiles which break off both during flight and after impact, helping it craft some extreme amounts of collateral damage. It is the perfect mobbing launcher, consuming 3 ammo with a charge time that's worth the wait, and we'll see you clear the field in seconds. The last honourable mention I have for you is the Soul Render, a dial assault rifle that belongs to the Guns Love and Tentacles DLC. It drops from Tom and Zam, who you can farm endlessly around here in Heart's Desire. The Soul Render is where elegance meets devastation, firing just your standard rounds until a wild ghost appears. They fly out of its barrel often and target your enemies all on their own. They constantly explode in your enemy's face causing some high impact damage and raising the bar of this already great gun. Number 1 has arrived, and the most powerful weapon that brings the boom like Nelly is the Free Radical, which only comes in shock and drops as part of the director's cut from Beef Pliskin you fight around here in Karas Canyon. The Free Radical is your classic Nelly wand blaster, but it's supercharged. It's essentially two guns in one, letting rip powerful orbs of energy like that of the beacon, which initiate a ricochet effect known only to the carrier. Those two things combine to create an incredible gun, but its unique effect isn't even needed when it holds this much power. It is the most powerful fully automatic weapon in the game, plasma coil included, able to reach over 100,000 damage per shot. That raw power can be enjoyed on everyone, obviously Moe's, but Amara can see its DPS soar by minimizing its charge time and increasing its reload speed. Having something this strong in the game almost defies belief 
but it's there so we may as well use it. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary splash damage weapons in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.